hopefully my speaker picks up everything that I say. So I gave you a handout, a note-taking guide for this, and it looks a little bit something like this on the second page. On the front page, uh, let me just go to the front page. I'll tell you what we're doing with that. The front page looks like this, and what we're trying to do is come up with some clues that indicate a chemical change has taken place, clues that indicate a physical change has taken place. Uh, we're going to compile that list of chemical and physical clues, and then we are going to, that's not really ready to go yet, but uh, we're going to come up with our definition of what a chemical change and a physical change is. So we're going to get there, though, by going through these 10 demonstrations first. And uh, for many of these, I'm going to ask for a volunteer, but I'm going to start this one out. Um, and cereal, something like this. Hammer, marshmallow. I had to switch over to the jumbo marshmallows because I was missing a lot. It was really embarrassing. If I miss this, it's really bad. I know, everybody's like, just do it already. All right, here we go. Haley, you're not paying attention. I'm sorry. This is high miss when I hung up trying to. Now the table's sticky. Um, chemical or physical change? Physical, physical change. And uh, if you were to make some observations that would tell you that that's a physical change, what would some of those observations be? Change in shape. Uh, And I probably did change the volume a little bit because marshmallows are mostly air or, you know, they're fluffed up with a lot of air. So when I smash it, I probably take out some of that air and the volume's probably a little bit less. But it's deformed. But if you think about it, chemically speaking, it's still the same thing it was before as it is after. It certainly would taste the same. still smells fresh like a fresh open bag of marshmallows. Uh, the only difference is you probably wouldn't want to eat this one right now because who knows where that hammer and that, unless you want to. No. I wouldn't do that to you. Um, so that's just a physical change. There's no chemical change taking place, not any different than it was before. I need a volunteer for part two of this. You could be my volunteer. Why don't you come on up here? I was just about to lick my finger, but I probably shouldn't do that at the desk here. Um, would you take one of those uh, sticks? Would you take one of these marshmallows? Yeah. And then... Are we burning it? We are going to do the perfect roasting of Do you have some Hershey's and... Uh... I do not have any s'more makings... So we're going to have to rough it. Uh, okay. But you can eat this if you don't screw it up too bad. <laughs> All right. Let me grab a sparker. Get you fired up here. So to close the barrel to light it, make it easier to light. And then we're going to turn down the heat a little bit. We'll make it more like a campfire. We don't want it too hot, otherwise, you know, just burst into flames. All right, show us your technique. We want the perfect marshmallow. Oh, boy, she's going to burn. No, I'm not. Oh, never mind, it's burning. I like my burnt anyway, so it's fine. It's all right. You're the perfect marshmallow. Whatever is perfect to you, and we'll just critique you. You'll critique me?
See, that's beautiful. I'll put that on my s'more. <laughs> is this good enough? Is it? Okay. It, it, I mean, it's yours. You're going to eat it, right? Okay, I'm done. All right. <laughs> um, <laughs> do you do the thing where you peel off one layer and then you cook the second layer? Well, I actually peel it off and eat it, then I put it on my s'more. I don't cook it again. Because I'm like, yeah. I so get so if I, you were I, to peel that off right now, then what about the what about the middle? You don't have a s'more. Well, that's unfortunate. I just ate this. Cookie. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can take that with you then. Okay. When you're done with the glass thing, you can just throw it in the garbage can. Um, throw the... The stick. This in the garbage can? Or take it home. The glass? You don't want to wash it? <laughs> but you're just gonna throw it out? You're After it's been in your mouth, I don't want it. I won't touch it. <laughs> um, no. Are we observing a chemical change or a physical change with the roasting of the marshmallow? Chemical. chemical. I'll agree with that. And then, what are some of the reasons? What are the clues that led you to believe that that was a chemical change and not just another physical change? Is burning. Is burning. Change in colors is, is a, a pretty obvious one with that. Um, people in the front row might be able to tell this a little bit more, but something else is a little different than what it was. There's a, a new odor. The smell of a fresh open bag of marshmallows has a distinct odor that everybody recognizes, but the burning of the sugar has that caramelized sugar smell, which everybody likes as well. So um, we got some things going on there. So we had a color change. Uh, there might have been a little smoke given off when she was burning How it. Much heat given off? Heat given off because it's kind of actually a kind of a, uh, it depends on how you cooked it. We put heat into it. It was being heated endothermically. Then it caught fire and it was giving off heat exothermically. So it did a little bit of both. But there was, a, there was definitely some energy changes taking place in there. But uh, that new odor is important. And it's not just the same odor stronger or anything like that. It's a distinctly new odor indicating a new chemical substance is present. You gonna eat that or just make I us am. all I'm, I'll watch I'm you. Okay. You okay. All right. I need um for the next one. I think I'm gonna do this one since I got the flame going here. I'll just do this one. Myself. Take some magnesium metal and do a little combustion with it. These bags. Yeah. So I don't know if you're aware, but most metals burn if you get them hot enough, uh, and especially if they're like thin pieces of metal. Like this is called magnesium ribbon because it's like. Uh, I don't know, like a slinky. And if I take a tong, and get this flame a little bit hotter. I don't need all of this. Pull that in the flame. magnesium burns. Now you don't want to stare at that too long. It's going to make you see spots. And like now, if you're looking at my face and you just see a blob, <laughs> that's not the normal blob that you see when you look at my face. Uh, that's your, your eyes reacting to an intense amount of light. Um, so they'll, they'll get better again. But what did you observe in that instance? What were some things that you could pull out of that? Gave off light, definitely. Anything else? Looks like, different. Like, uh, so it went from like a solid uh, that was all you know, brittle or you know, ductile and malleable, bendy like a piece of metal, and now over here, it's actually a, a fine powder. So it, it's still a solid, and it's a solid there and a solid there, but uh, it doesn't look like a metal anymore. It, it does, it's, it's brittle, it's crumbly uh, from what it used to be. Um, 
Oh, I guess maybe if I'm doing this with my hand. I don't know if you can tell what color it is now. White. It's a white powder, whereas this was a silver metal. So we did have that color change taking place. Um, there was one important one that you might have missed because you were blind and you couldn't see it. Let me just show it to you here. I'll cover it up right from the beginning, and then you can tell me what it was. A lot of smoke. A lot of smoke being produced along with that. So light gave off heat. It, as it was burning, it gives off a lot of heat. It's exothermic. Smoke was there. Color change was there. Um, the uh, substance produced is actually called magnesium oxide. This is a chemical compound. And it's not, uh, it's not bad for you. In fact, people take magnesium, particularly during COVID, because magnesium is supposed to be good for your immune system. And uh, magnesium oxide is one of the forms of uh, magnesium that people do. So I'll lick the table when I'm done. <laughs> but chemical or physical? Chemical. The uh, properties of that before, you know, with uh, being a piece of metal and being ductile and malleable, and the properties that it has afterwards are two different things. Before it was just a chemical element from the periodic table, afterwards it was a chemical compound because it reacted with air, um, oxygen in the air, and formed a chemical compound, magnesium oxide. So oh, there's the marshmallow. Sticky. It's going to be there the whole day. Um, all right, let's look at this. You guys are way, way too young to th for this, but back in the olden days, you know, when your parents were kids, before everything was digital, like digital cameras and digital flashes, we had to use flash bulbs. Yeah, we like the value. It was this little bulb that you could use one time, and you plugged it into your camera, and when you pushed the button, the, it had um, it was a glass bulb, and inside it had magnesium uh, wool. And when you push the button, there would be a spark. The wool would burst into flames, give off a bright white light, and then the shutter would open, and you would have like you know that one second window. And everybody would be, of course, blind for a second because it was a pretty bright white light. Now you just have a little digital strobe that goes off or an LED that flashes. But you know, olden times. <clears throat> um, yeah, I do. It's going to be my volunteer before I show show you what it is. It doesn't need all fire. So you're not Andrea. Let's, let's do this. Stuff. Uh, we are going to mix up a silver nitrate, potassium oh. chloride. <laughs> I didn't break anything. It's okay. Just a minor earthquake on the camera. And give you the poisonous one. That's good. And we need a scoopula. Scoopula for you. For me, beaker for you, beaker for me, and some water. So we're going to make a, a solution of silver nitrate and a solution of potassium chloride. So all you're going to do with your container, hopefully yours isn't all chunky like mine, is take like uh, one or two scoops. Yours cost about $20 a scoop. Mine costs about 5 so I'm going to use more of mine. That's good. So you just went with the $40 scoop. Um, and then we're going to add water to it. Give it a little 
little swirl. I should mention, you've been very good about not spilling, but uh, that one, when you get on your skin, it will stain your skin jet black. Oh. And it will last for about a week. That's kind of cool. Can I do it? Yeah, wait, can I get a little bit on my finger? It's poisonous, too. Does it hurt? Yes, okay. No, it doesn't hurt. Like what? It's kind of like a henna tattoo, but you know, instead of being like a brown color, it's it's jet black. It'll be gray for a, a. You won't notice it day one. Day two, it'll start to turn gray. Day three, it will turn jet black, and then it will last for about a week. No, it's bad for you. What will it do to you? Danger. May intensify fire. Harmful if swallowed. Causes severe skin burns and eye damage. If you put this in a dropper and you squirt it in your eye, your eyes would turn jet black. <laughs> like the soulless person you are. Um, no. uh, avoid breathing the dust. Wear protective gloves. You are not prepared. <laughs> and then again, it has a whole bunch of first aid things. Wear her goggles, too. <laughs> yeah. Lethal dose for 50% of the population in rats. <laughs> 1,773 milligrams per kilogram of rat. Good thing you're not a rat. Um, not. Put a little bit more water in there. Just a little bit. So up to this point, and this is all it is in number four. Number five is going to be a continuation of this. Um, Chemical or physical? What are we thinking? Physical. Physical? Chemical. Chemical? Are they both physical? Are they both chemical? Are they both going to be the same? They're going to be the same, but the more expensive ones are smaller. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, why would you use the more expensive stuff? Um, well, it's chemical. I mean, no, physical. Physical? So what's the process that took place here? What's the key activity going on here? Dissolving. dissolving. And dissolving is a physical change. It's still, in this case, potassium chloride, and now it's just dissolved in water. But it's a homogeneous mixture. Chemical reactions um, involve a transformation, something changing its chemical composition. But this is just potassium chloride swimming around in water molecules. The water is still water. The potassium chloride is still potassium chloride. So it's just a physical change. And if I let the water evaporate, I would have my potassium chloride back. And the same thing over here. It's clear, colorless. Uh, it's dissolved all the way throughout. And you don't see anything. So that's a physical change as well. Let me this part down. Uh, one was a white crystalline solid, the other one was a little bit more gray, but now they made colorless solutions that, you know, dissolving is kind of magical. Things kind of disappear when they dissolve, but uh, it's nothing more than a physical change. Now, there's a second thing we can do with this. best bartending skills in this classroom. You hung out with them in the summer. They threw a hell of a party. Oh, Allie, for sure. Allie? Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah. Allie, you're up Are again. You Are we mixing them? We're going to do a little mixing of them. And uh, let me just get this out of the way and this out of the way. Paper towel ready because I'm not confident in your skills. I haven't seen them in action yet. So what I'm going to have you do is we're going to mix the solution of silver nitrate, which is on your left, and the solution of potassium chloride, which is on your right. And you're going to do like your best uh, bartending moves. Like, you know, pour them at the same time. Uh, raise it up. Oh, I like that. See, she already raise it up, <laughs> bring it back down, raise it up again, you know, for a little dramatic thing. Streams crossing each oh, other yeah, as yeah, they're yeah. pouring. Yeah. You got this, All right? right. Yeah. Uh, maybe... Do I need goggles? Yeah, you want know, to poison and the whole stain your skin, eyes black. <laughs> I'll look pretty cool though. You look kind of look badass. What happened to you? Chemistry accident. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. 
Oh. Yeah, it's poisonous, you know. Kills rats. Yes. <laughs> I survived. I'm stronger than a rat. Here she goes. There's not a lot of up and downs. Oh, I'm sorry. Do you want me to continue? Oh, see, and it leaked. Looks like you made cottage cheese. Oh. Mm. All right, thank you. So um, I'll get the light back on so you can see this a little bit better. So two clear colorless solutions coming together. <laughs> what is one thing that you noticed for an observation? The white, the color change. Color change? It went from clear to white? Um, Anything else noticeable there? It used to be transparent and now it's opaque. Transparent and opaque. I like those words. Transparent meaning the light can pass through it. Opaque meaning the light is being blocked, so the light does not pass through it very well. Um, the texture like changes from the bottom to the top. Very good. Uh, down here, it's actually quite thick and pasty, kind of like cottage cheese-ish. And uh, on the top, it's it's much thinner, kind of like milk or something like that. So it's milky white up there, and then it's thicker, cottage cheesy-ish down there. Not the most scientific terminology. But there is something uh, that we're trying to get to. There's a term that you use when you put solutions together, mix things together, and something settles out of the solution. It is a sediment of sorts, but it's not the key word I'm looking for. Polarity. Polarity might influence why they're separating, but it's also not the key word. Think in terms of weather. They often talk about things falling from the sky. They might refer to that stuff as precipitation. precipitation. Whether it's snow, rain, sleet, hail, stuff falling out of the sky, they call it precipitation. Precipitation is when a solid falls out of a solution. And that thicker, cottage, cheesy-like material at the bottom is your precipitate that's forming. So we had that cloudy white mixture. We had that color change. But that cloudiness is the precipitate that's forming. And it was forming the whole time that things were being mixed together, but some of the particles were really small. The precipitate particles were really small, and they're still settling. And some of them were bigger clumps, and they uh, they settled faster. If we gave this thing like, well, we'll leave it sit till the end of the class period. But if we let it sit, you'll see that top layer get clearer and clearer as the finer particles settle out to the bottom of the container. Well, then what's left on the top? Is that like just like water? So. In this particular case, um, the precipitate is actually silver and chlorine. Silver and chlorine aren't soluble in water. They don't dissolve in water. So they form a precipitate together. And the um, clear layer that will eventually form on the top will be potassium and nitrate. And it'll be water and potassium nitrate on the top. So I mean, I'll just let it sit here. And that way, I forget about it. We'll look at that in a while. Um, Regardless, when we got a color change, we got a precipitate forming. That's an indication of chemical or physical? Chemical. Chemical, chemical changes often involve the formation of a precipitate. Can we do like the cabbage water and vinegar? That stuff is so hot. Like an acid base indicator? Not today. few things out of here. The sloppy bartender. I thought it was pretty good. It was like, pretty good. It was. I've had people like entirely miss the flat. Well, like, like I missed the garbage. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. Next one. I need somebody with steady hands, not accident prone, preferably 
not inclined to light themselves on fire by accident. Any volunteers? When you lit it and just yeah. like, yeah. if I like, if I like the Bunsen burner for you, would you do it? Talking about talking like that. I mean, I don't think so. <laughs> no. Those look really stretched out backwards. Okay. Who's that fat thing? <laughs> <laughs> Someone really these stars. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Okay. Uh, first thing I'm going to have you do, and I'll give you a piece of paper for this. So let me... I'm kind of scared. Um, I'm going to have you put this sulfur in this test tube using this scoopula. Okay. And just kind of fill it up. Like All the way? Pretty much. Oh, Lord. You might just find like it easier to dump do. Dump it? Yeah. All right. Or at least have it like uh, it's easier to get to. Cool. What you're going to be doing is heating the sulfur. What do you guys know about sulfur? Everybody else, Does it? Smells bad? Not so bad, right? No. After she's done scooping it in, I'll come around with the sulfur. Let everybody take a snort. <laughs> 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 Walk. Walk. There will be no sulfur going up the nose. Just, just the oil is what we're going for here. Bad oh. choice of truth. That's pretty good. All right, let's have them smell this and. Normally, I tell you never take something out and put it back in a container, but we only use this container for this purpose, so I don't have to worry about it. I've been told that this actually smells like something you think. They give, they, they give you different things, and you can tell me what you think it smells like, but I've been told it smells like uh, a particular store that they go to. Uh, it smells like a Disney World ride. I'm getting like a Play-Doh cap. That's what I'm getting for that. A what? A Play-Doh cap. Oh, Play-Doh cap? Yep. <laughs> song that never ends and uh and i think it's the combination of the water the water the way they treat the water so it doesn't get all nasty and uh and the electronics but it kind of smells like this but it also smells like a hardware store or if you're leaving uh costco because it got the tire section they use rubber in the vulcanization of mm -hmm. yep. rubber to make tires and stuff so you smell you smell some of that in fresh tires go by the tire department at Costco as you exit or the hardware store and you go into certain aisles, you'll smell that. But by itself, sulfur doesn't smell that bad. Now, the goal, Haley, is not to make it smell bad. So what you are going to be doing is you're going to heat this, and we're going to heat it gently. And for that, 
I need a test tube holder. I need a holder. I got a special holder for this one. Here it is. Normally, uh, like a test tube holder wouldn't be good for this because it's too close and you're going to be holding this thing for like a few minutes. Okay. And uh, a utility clamp would hold it only in one position and we got to keep this moving, otherwise it's going to burn. You hold that? Sure. I put, <laughs> I put <laughs> goggle straps here to make it automatically grip so when her weak hands lose grip, she can hold it with one hand if she needs to, <laughs> instead of holding it with two. See? Okay. All right. So, hold that. I'm gonna light this up. Keep me lit. I'm gonna get my sparker. I don't like this. So the key is to not cook it too much in one spot. So I'm gonna turn that inner blue cone uh, flame away. I don't want it to be that hot. So we're just gonna keep it moving around in that blue flame. So. It, do a little bit on the bottom, a little bit on the left, a little bit on the like right. Move it. Kind of, yeah, slide it up to the top and then, you know, get the top and the bottom. Just keep it moving around so that one spot doesn't get too hot. And then figure out how to put your goggles on while you're doing oh, yeah. that. Okay. I'm kind of scared. What's happening? It's uh, going up in flames. Better watch out. Yes. I want to be the first one. So. If if you want to find out how bad sulfur can smell, if Haley doesn't do this right, the room will start to smell like, well, they refer to it as one of the adjectives they use when they describe hell. Um, the sulfur coming out of the gates of hell. Haley's got the power to make, make that smell if she wants I want to. to. Burning sulfur uh, <laughs> does smell kind of bad, and uh, you taste it in the back of your mouth, and it kind of sticks to the back of your throat and it turns okay. the air kind of acidic, and you know, it's, it's not good. But she's keep, oh, oh, gosh, she's smoking. <laughs> I said it was smoking, and you didn't say anything, so I thought it was supposed to. So that it's not getting too hot in one spot. <clears throat> I'm gonna get a beaker it here. It's getting smaller. Now at this point, I should also point out, you don't want to drop that by accident because molten sulfur sticking to your skin is going to burn and it's going to stick like napalm. Oh God, it's it smelling. It smells. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> God. Whose fault is that? My, I don't want to do this anymore. How much longer? And you're almost there. Ugh. <laughs> that actually smells so bad. Ugh. So what else we got going on? We got the, the volume changing. It's like a liquid now. It's a liquid. We got a change in state taking place. What about the color? <laughs> yeah, it went from uh, being like this light pastel yellow. Now it's going down to uh, an orange color, and it's even getting to be a brown color at the top. <laughs> I think we're pretty close, though. I don't yeah, wanna... I think we, we can be done. Is it, is it all melted, do you think? I don't know. There's some stuff on this side. There's like a big chunk. Yeah. Is there? It's kind of a chunk in the middle, but... Burn. But don't burn. Well, uh... Oh, you turned it off. Yeah. <laughs> all it. right, so you're not quite done yet. Um, okay. So we got this color change. We got the volume change. We got a phase change taking place. Are you leaning towards a chemical reaction or a physical change at this point? It, it might feel like a chemical. Let's hold off on that for a second. Now, the second thing we're going to do here with this is we're going to cool it down. And the way we're going to cool it down is not to put the test tube in there, but we're going to pour it in there and pour it as slowly pour the, as you what's can. What's in, in? Yeah, pour that. And you can go, like, once you get a stream going, a slow stream, you can raise it up higher and kind of okay. let it uh, yeah, yeah. fall through the air. All right. Whoa, that's, whoa, whoa. That's whoa. Fast. Not that fast. See, Ellie, that's how you do it. You get it way up there. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry. I have, like, <laughs> liquid, liquid. Dude, this is cool. And there's still that little spring coming out of there. It's smoking a little bit because I think a little bit of the, the sulfur caught on fire, but... Uh, Never. <laughs> I think it's done. All right. We'll say All right. it's done. You can just set it down on the table then right now. We'll let it go. Right. Thank you for that. You're so welcome. Thank you for not injuring yourself. Yeah.
Come on, would have been shame out of you. Hang on, because I was thinking the whole time. Yeah. But, oh, crap, I'm going to have to deal with these toys all day. Um, heating sulfur, phase change, we went from light yellow to the dark orange color, maybe even brown. But as it cools down, um, Dude, it, it was like, like started. It, it, no, it, it like <laughs> wasn't, and then all of a sudden it was just like a huge, just like. Okay, some it of it we burnt. Let's just pretend we didn't burn some of it. Like this gooey patch here at the top. Is that the use of the zoo to make those like uh, animal things? Uh, no, but that is uh, <laughs> burning rubber plastic, so there is some sulfur involved with that. But um, sure. if you don't touch the middle, the middle is a little sticky. But uh, <laughs> I didn't say smell. But uh, now it's gone back to a solid again. It's got that yellow color to it. And if I was to take it and put it in a pestle and mortar and grind it up, we could grind that back up to a yellow powder, and it would be back to what we originally started with, except for that little bit that we burnt, and I peeled that part off. So phase changes, temporary color change, actually are more of an indication of a, a physical change than it is a chemical change. Thanks. You're welcome. Yeah, you're welcome. Another example of this that might kind of fall in that category, if you took a piece of copper yesterday and you heated it up and it was glowing red hot and then you let it cool back down again, it's still copper at the beginning, it's still copper at the end. It might have melted, but it's still copper all the way throughout. So a temporary color change is a physical change. All right, let's see if we can do something less spelling. Everybody got what they need for this one? Number seven. I need a volunteer. This is so fun. You're, you're up then. That feels so bad. Can yes. you like? Yeah, it's all mm -hmm. Do I get to use a Oh, I just don't know if I have vinegar. Let's see if I get vinegar. Yeah, you can get to Look at it. Really? Yeah, you were sleeping there the other day. Oh you were sending me pictures. <gasps> oh, I won't. Get it for the basement. It's kind of big, but like I can move that little like. Wait, which one? Because there's like <laughs> the one. <laughs> I don't care. I'm talking about like the little chase. The chase? Huh? In the corner? That one or like. The chase? What's the chase? It's a chair that like reclines back. It doesn't recline. Oh, the one on, laying on the ground or like, like where it's just like a bed kind of thing. Like it's like a couch? By, by the sign or by the opposite? I'm talking about both of them, but which one are for you talking about? For sleep? Oh yeah, that's good. Like yeah, that's comfy. Oh yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, can I take this home? Do we have to?
to like clean this off so you don't like contaminate the paper. No, it's yeah, no, I'm not okay. worried about this stuff. All right, we'll let you start scooping that into that flask. How much do I need? Can I do a lot so we get like a big bang kind of thing? Sure. I just kind of spill. Um, pink balloon or blue balloon? Oh, um, I think we should do pink. Oh. <laughs> I keep spilling. Big. I want to go big. <laughs> <laughs> you like that flapping cheek sound? <laughs> All right. Not for you. <laughs> what does that say? C E V N, or is that an R? I think that's Devin and Maria. Mm. All right, so I'm going to pour some vinegar in there, and or you can pour vinegar in there. Who wants to I, I want to pour vinegar. You wanna pour, I'm going to put it on the balloon. You can pour the vinegar. Yes. Let me try not to miss. I won't miss. How much do I put in? Like this much. Squirt. Okay, go! Go! That wasn't as exciting as I thought it would be. I was, I was kind of like. I was hoping for I more. I was too. expecting more. Okay, let's try Can we do it again? Let's add more. More vinegar? More, more, more everything. Or are we going to do another one similar to it next? So let me do this. Uh, if you feel that. It's cold. It's cold. So. And a little contrast between number seven and number eight. This one, well, okay, you can pull, but so you feel the bottom. It feels cold to the touch. I mean, it's not like terrible, but it was room temperature. Now it's feeling a little chilly. Yeah. And. Uh, Endothermic and exothermic doesn't tell you if it's chemical or physical change. Endothermic and exothermic things happen with chemical reactions. Endothermic and exothermic happens with physical. Um, but it does tell you something's going on here. Okay, got it already. Good. Um, touch it. Um, let's just do this real quick. Heat was absorbed. Because heat was being absorbed, it was sucking the heat away from your skin. That's why it feels cool to the touch. This reaction sucks. It sucks in the heat from your skin, and then it feels cold to you because anything that feels cold to you is sucking heat away from your body. Um, but the key thing is it was producing a gas, and we haven't really seen that with any of the other ones. Chemical or physical? Chemical reaction. And then uh, the gas that was produced in this one was carbon dioxide gas, which doesn't do anything very spectacular because it's carbon dioxide gas. Carbon dioxide gas is used to put out fires, so it doesn't make a big fire. All right. Let's do something similar to that. Um, volunteer? Yeah, go on. Go do one. It's fun. You want to help me out? Go do one. Yeah. All right. We're going to use another flask. We're going to almost do the same thing, but we're going to use different chemicals. Um, this. Alright, 
you go ahead and start scooping zinc metal into that container. Sorry for not giving you a balloon choice here, but one blue. And I was at home. I've got this divided up into two parts for number eight. So part one of eight is taking this zinc metal and we're gonna mix it with hydrochloric acid and one more scoop should do it. Then, the question is, do you want to do the balloon or you want to pour the hydrochloric acid? Pour the hydrochloric acid. Pour away. Well, how much can I do? Ah, uh, until I say when. That should go good. That one kind of do its thing a little bit. Get your eyes dry. <laughs> the balloon's got a leak. Yeah. Oh, I found where the leak is. It's right about where my fingers are. Let's see if we can salvage this a little bit. So we're going the opposite direction. This time it's exothermic. And it's not like scorching hot or anything. You're, you're good to go, Haley. Okay. But uh, this one produces heat, so it's giving off heat. Um, and we produced bubbles again, exothermic this time, but again, endo and exo doesn't tell you if it's chemical or physical by itself, but producing a gas where there wasn't one before, in this case, is a chemical reaction. And then, for the second part of this, This time it's not carbon dioxide gas. <laughs> so the gas is hydrogen. So the bubbles produced were hydrogen gas bubbles. And if we take a little uh, flame to that balloon this time, blows up because hydrogen gas is explosive. <laughs> I normally don't do it with the splint for a little balloon like that. I asked for a volunteer. I just couldn't do it to Haley. But if uh, you know, if it was like the other Haley, I would have said, go ahead. I would give her the lighter and they would reach out there and it would be like fireball up to here, you know. It's just, <laughs> I was nice today. Um, light, fireball, heat release, exothermic. It will actually like singe the hair off your arm or your or your eyebrows. Um, 
chemical or physical for the plume? I forgot even what number nine was. Oh, I know what number nine is. You want to do number nine? You sure? Sure. It's more likely to stain your fingers brown, but. Um, coming up. Order. Make sure this is mostly clean. I'm going to have you grind this potassium permanganate. So I used to have a jar of potassium permanganate that the crystals of potassium permanganate were actually pretty big. Um, but every time I order it now, I get more of a fine powder, and that kind of defeats the purpose. But even fine powders can be ground up into finer powders. And uh, the first thing Ryan is doing is just grinding. So breaking large particles into small particles using the water. Is that part of what he's doing right now? Or Ryan, you tell us he's got the best one. Is that a chemical or a physical? Uh, physical. Physical. Yeah, we're just taking the same stuff and breaking it up into smaller crystals. Uh, potassium permanganate is kind of interesting. It, if you look at it in the jar, it looks like it's kind of a dark gray color. And even in there, it probably looks mostly gray. But if you look at the end of the pestle and the mortar, it's actually purple. When it's a fine powder and you put it against a white surface, it's got a purple color. So, uh, yeah, that's probably pretty good. And then, for the second part of that, this is this. I feel like we need a better thing for safety, but are you going to make something explode on me? I would never. I'm just going to tip this down so that I can have this on my computer. <laughs> and that you guys can maybe see a little bit better. And oh, I gotta move the camera so that people at home can see. Oh, wrong way. Yeah. Kind of see. Oh, you can zoom it in if you want. There you go. All right, bring that over here. I'm gonna have you pour all that into this little cup. that down over there. Great. And then, um, use a scoopy lever, we're just going to poke a hole here. Kind of like making a lake for mashed potato from gravy. And I'm going to have you pour some glycerin in there. Let me write or tap this up here so they can see. We're going to add the chemical glycerin to the potassium permanganate. Glycerin is a clear liquid. It's safe to get on your skin. You actually use it in all your hand lotions and face creams and stuff like that. It doesn't smell like anything. Sometimes you can even eat it because they'll put it in, you know, gels and things like that that you use for medical purposes and stuff like that. So it's a, by itself a, a really safe thing to work with. But it's made up of uh, hydrocarbons, hydrogen, oxygen, and carbon. And a lot of you is made up of hydrocarbons and, you know, they interact with each other harmlessly. But when it comes in contact with something like potassium permanganate, it's a strong oxidizer, and it will strongly react with the glycerin. And uh, so I'll have you pour some in there right in the middle, fill up that little lake. That's good. And then cap it up and kind of step back for a moment. And I'm probably going to turn on the fume hood if it starts to fizzle. Mm -hmm. 
Um, Mrs. Kane can never get this reaction to work, and I always get it to work, and I brought Ryan in here. It's not working. I don't know. You're in good company. Mrs. Kane's been trying to do it for 25 years. I'm going to see if I can help it along a little bit. I uh, don't think it's too much encouragement for you. Step back a little bit. So we get a heat, light, flame, smoke. Took a little while to build up enough heat. It, it, it's an exothermic reaction, and it starts building up enough heat, and eventually it builds up enough heat that it bursts into flames and it happens more rapidly. Um, the fume puts on fire, but okay. heat, light, smoke. And that part of it is a chemical reaction. And if you don't believe me that potassium permanganate's uh, purple, if I just add a little water to the crucible, it's actually magenta. When you get on your skin, it doesn't quite do that to your skin, but it turns your skin brown for a couple days. It stains your skin as it oxidizes the outer layers of your skin. All right, got one more for you, and I got to do this one by myself after I put out the fire that Ryan started. Get the smoke to stop for a second. Still burning. As Haley would tell you, if you blow on a piece of paper that's got glowing embers, it will burst back into flames. The last one I'm going to do is going to record this, this, and this. And I'm going to have to do this with the input as well. So we are going to look at. I got to bring my camera back up. Wrong direction all together. One more time over here for the people at home or Mrs. King's class. Um, the last one we're going to do is sulfuric acid and sugar. working with it if I don't have to. You ever see uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark? And when the Ark of the Covenant is in like a crate for the Nazis, the Ark burns off the Nazi symbol. And at the end of the movie, when it's in a U.S. crate, the Ark of the Covenant burns off the U.S. flag. Sulfuric acid is kind of like the same thing. This label just kind of disintegrated because it doesn't even like the contents of the bottle. It's supposed to look like this. But sulfuric acid is so nasty, it just does its thing. So what I'm going to do here is uh, I'm going to create a little hole in the middle of this powdered sugar. The sugar represents you. Pure as the white driven snow. Sweet, fluffy. Okay, maybe fluffy is not a compliment, but uh, <laughs> this is you. And it's a hydrocarbon, hydrogen, carbon, and oxygen. That's what makes up like 90% of who you are that over here and turn my camera oh, right. <laughs> there I am. zoom it all back in push it down a little bit get the monitor out of the way hopefully low enough that they can see what's going on and then I'm going to do this not going to mess with this stuff. If you got sulfuric acid in your eyes, I want you to think about how long you would have to get to the eye wash station and start flushing. And if you could get there fast enough with this strength acid. So I'm 
Got mess in your eye. Things are starting to hurt. You're freaking out. Oops, too late. Your eyes just blew up like a piece of carbon squirting out of your skull. There's nothing you can do. That is such a corrosive chemical. It just took all that white powdery sugar and stripped out all the water molecules from it, all the hydrogen and oxygen, just ripped it right out of the molecules and left you with nothing but carbon left. Basically, turn you to ash. <laughs> so, yeah, the eyewash station is there. You know, the, it's not going to help you much. Not, not when it's this strong. I'm going to suck some of those fumes out of here. And then uh, if I take the right kind of tongs, smells really bad, kind of like the burning gates of hell. And this is, the glass is so hot. Anybody want to touch it? Thank you. It's so hot it will like burn your finger. You have to come up here because I can't bring it into the room. But the glass gets so hot that you can't hold your finger against it. And this is carbon. I cut off a slice of this. It's just carbon all the way through. Every water molecule just ripped right off. Oh, it so bad. So I always do that one at the end. Blow those fumes out into the room next door. But it's a color change. We got smoke. We got heat release. Definitely a chemical change. And uh, that's where we're going to wrap things up. What I'd like you to do tomorrow is just take the time to take take our clues that we did and put them onto the cover sheet. If there was clues for a chemical change, put those on the cover sheet for chemical. If there are clues that indicate a physical change, put them on the front page for that. And then we'll work on the definition tomorrow. In the meantime, though, you should be able to answer the last page, front and back, identifying what's a chemical and physical change from the examples that I have there on paper. So basically finish up the last two pages as your priority, because that's what I'm going to grade you on tomorrow. Oh, yeah.